In this video I'll be going over this Underwood number no. 5 typewriter. It is the project I worked on for two and a half months starting in December of last year and finishing early this month, February of 2021. It is a concoction of two terminally damaged Underwoods. One was from 1905. I acquired that one at an estate sale and it was a relatively nice example. The mechanism was in good shape and it was aesthetically pleasing with the one major downside that the frame had cracked in five different places which had rendered the machine useless. Um, the cross member had cracked off and therefore the segment had no place to mount to. The previous owner at some point tried to fix the machine by wiring the frame together but alas to no avail. And then I also had an example from 1920. This particular machine was a parts machine we've had for a while. We'd scavenged off the escapement in the carriage and the remainder of the mechanism was quite rusted, but it had a solid frame. So I opted to experiment and see what 15 years made for changes in the design of Underwood, the classic Underwood, which is uh, seemingly identical, but I can assure you very different. However, I managed to make it work not without any flaws or failures. Um, I actually hit quite a few walls during the duration of this project. Um, some of those walls, it took a couple of weeks to let the project sit dormant for a couple of weeks before I was able to rectify the issue. Um, the main problem that I came across working on this project was that the carriage from 1905 was not transferable to the frame of 1920. Um, and the ribbon advance mechanism neither was usable. It was from 1905, it could not be transferred to the frame from 1920. These are all the differences I'll be going over in this video. I'll give you a typing example of how well it works. And uh, just a little celebratory dedication to a project that uh, generated a lot of curse words, uh, blood, sweat and tears. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I ended up very, very happy with the uh, the results of the work I put into this, and many people they might question why I would spend this much time and energy building a typewriter that is uh, fairly common, but the main reason would be that um, I was just curious to see whether it would be possible to make one machine out of two machines that were made 15 years apart and learn the differences that were made over that period of time. And it is quite fascinating to see how machines that were identical actually changed so much from each other. So, anyways, I hope you enjoy it. As I mentioned before, this machine is a concoction of two terminally damaged typewriters that I've built into one functional machine. One is from 1905 and the other one was from 1920. The machine from 1905 I bought in an estate sale. Um, and I came to discover that the frame had five cracks. It was the cross member that ran above underneath the carriage here, which holds the escapement was broken on both sides. So the escapement was like functionally, it was sitting loose in the mechanism. It was only held in by the tie bars and the linkages. Uh, there was a crack here and there was a crack here and here. And the only part that was still whole that held the frame together as one part was this bar that runs here underneath the carriage to the back. So essentially that machine was not fixable. I mean you could potentially, it's very difficult to get cast iron welded or plated, but at the end of the day it's just not worth the fix. And um, a machine from 1920, we had that as a parts machine for a long time, but the mechanism, it was rusted, we used various components already on different machines, the escapement was donated to a different Underwood 5 I worked on for a customer. The carriage was did it going to a machine from 1930 that we had as well, but actually which didn't turn out to work on that um, machine, and that was also an issue with this project, but more on that later. So this machine, it was made yeah, in 1905 and 1920, and there's various parts and components here that I was also scavenged of a Underwood 3 um, that I have, which I'll also be fixing up, but for the time being I used some of those parts because I wanted this to be finished first. And throughout this project I discovered that there were a lot of differences um, 
that that made it a problem to make this as work as well as it does now. Um, there were two major components I could not fit into the frame from 1920 that were made in 1905. The first one, and that was a big one, was the fact that the carriage, which I have over here, this is the carriage from 1905, well actually the only the upper part from 1905, because an Underwood 5 has a, a skeleton shift, which means that there is two co uh, major components to the carriage and they uh, move independently from each other in order to um, create the shift mechanism. And this is the inner upper part. This is the part that would uh, remain stationary on the typewriter while there's another component that sits in here that holds the platen that moves up and down. The problem with this is that there is a very subtle difference between this component and the component from 1920 with, uh, that this machine is fitted with. And it's probably, you won't be able to tell very well on here, but if you were to look at this part here, which is this side, this side runs over here. Um, this sits higher as such, this bar in the front sits lower on this machine than it does, or it sits lower on this machine than it does on this carriage. And what problem it created with the frame from 1920 is that the carriage from 1905 would run too high um, compared to the carriage from 1920 and therefore the type alignment the shift was completely out of whack. You could not actually rectify it by making adjustments to the shift. It could not work. So I could not make the carriage from 1905 fit the frame from 1920. It's just not possible. So I, I mean of course I discovered this upon completely assembling and fixing up the carriage from 1905 and having to re do this process all over again in order to fit all the parts from 1905 onto the carriage from 1920. Another big difference that this machine has is that in 1905, and this was one of the reasons I wanted the machine initially, is that the ribbon advance mechanism were two independent components compared to the joint unit that came to be and was introduced in later on, it was I think around 1907, 1908, it was a ribbon advance mechanism introduced that had a bar that ran across, excuse me, <clears throat> um, which can join the two components. While um, the mechanism from 1905, as you can see, it has two separate units. There is a gear drive on each side, and the way this was operated, as you can see, on a Underwood number no. 5 with a later drive, there's a, a major gear on one side and the drive that runs the mechanism, while on the other side, there is merely a spring drum or a spring and a cylinder that holds the mechanism in that determines the tension uh, for when you push and pull in order to determine the direction in which the ribbon turns. With this, it worked differently. This would sit in the machine like that. And there was a bar that ran across a toggle as such that was linked by one single screw and spring into the cross member, the fork or the comb that holds all the type bars. And that would teeter totter on that single screw and therefore engage and disengage this gear on each side, determining which side the ribbon would turn. And because this um, comb here in the back is from 1920, it's not fitted with that slot and there is not enough material to create one as such. Therefore, this mechanism could not work. I will remain, I mean, there are lots of different, subtle differences to this machine other than that, but those were the two major, major components that I had to um, sacrifice as such because I could not make them work on the frame from 1920. However, other than that, it is still largely a machine from 1905 other than the frame. The frame I've, uh, I, 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 pre I prepped, I had sanded it, I primed it, I painted it, I lacquered it. And um, the paint that you see on here is what I applied because the paint that was ori originally on the machine was in terrible condition. Uh, the only thing that is original to the frame from 1920 is the patent dates I managed to salvage. Those actually appeared after I started polishing the original old paint and discovered this had been painted over. A common practice back in those days. Same goes for the lettering here on the front, but the rest has been painted. The front panel, however, and the paper, play, uh, paper table on the carriage is from 1905. And interestingly enough, I could 
I had to sacrifice, I had to, um, not sacrifice, I had to come up with a mechanism that worked to carry the feed rollers from the platen in order to make that fit because um, the, interestingly enough, the typewriter from 1905 if you were to look at it it would have two bars that ran underneath the platen that would carry three feed rollers and by 1920 Underwood had adapted to have each bar carry four feed rollers and the uh, guide that runs underneath the platen on 1905 model is conjoined to the paper table while it's a separate unit in 1920 so long story short it was an ordeal to make that work um, but I've managed to do it. I had to shorten some of the feed rollers um, and I created a few washers and various components to make that work, but it works now. So, uh, covering a few other subtle differences that you have between 1905 and 1920 is, of course, the lack of a color selector that would be located here following the introduction of 1907 and a backspace. This machine does not have both because that's not what it had in the model from 1905 and I wanted to preserve that as much as I could. But the process took two and a half months. The problem with the carriage blocked the project for about three weeks. Eventually I got the carriage back from, 19, from the 1920s machine that we were initially going to use on a different one and reassembled that and used that. So this carriage belongs actually with this frame. And um, I installed the ribbon drive from 1920 because I could not make the other one work. The remainder of the mechanism, however, the type bar, the key, link, the, the key levers, the linkages, the bell, the carriage components, everything as far as I could manage it is from 1920 or 1905, from the 1905 mechanism. And there you have it. This is the project. And I think the outcome is pretty good. It's pretty nice. It, it works flawlessly. There's a few adjustments I've yet to make, but given that every single screw has been in my hands, this machine was never assembled in this fashion. There's only one of this type, and that's because I came up with this configuration. I have a sticky character turn lever. To f it's occasionally it will stick. You just have to tap it, and it will undo itself. So I think that's a matter of adjusting it. And um, because I had to alter the feed rollers in order for it to work on this machine, I had to thicken them, up, thicken them up a little bit. One of them catches slightly on the right ribbon cup uh, if the carriage is all the way to the right and you shift. That's the only issue I have. Other than that, it functions just as properly as a conventional Underwood. Um, but for being as amalgamated as this one is, it is a rarity. It is an unusual machine. Um, to anyone that has some knowledge when it comes to these classic Underwoods. But I had a lot of fun making this project, um, even though it took quite some time and frustration to get to it, to, to get it as good as it is right now. Everything I've, I've, I've lacquered it, I've lacquered the original paint and the pinstriping and the decals because the um, shellac that was on the that, that is original to the machine from 1905 is disintegrating quite badly and of course the decals and the pinstriping was applied after that was lacquered so in order to preserve that I had to redo the process or um, eventually perhaps have it repainted or have it uh, powder coated and then get the decals and pinstriping from an alternative source but for now this is what it is and I'm very happy with the outcome
The machine has some interesting characteristics which uh, originate from the machine from 1905. Um, an example of that would be that the typewriter uh, at some point had the key lever for the fraction key, fraction figure and the slash replaced. The type or the type bar, but I think it was the key lever because it has a Bakelite or celluloid insert while the rest of them were the cardboard and glass style. This one does not have glass over top of it. Uh, and this one indicates that it would be a three-fourths fraction and a slash while the type bar in fact prints a half fraction and a slash. Other thing to note is that the at and cent key is missing its type bar and that was the case on the machine before I took it apart from 1905. I presume it was taken out in attempt to be replaced at some point and they never bought it or it fell out because the segments actually had broken off the main frame and was only held in place by the type bars as such and because that in order to remove the type bars in an underwood it's very simple all you have to do is undo the type uh, the segment from the main frame that way it will allow it creates a space between the linkage and the type bar and you can unhook them as such so I'm thinking that's how it got lost but uh, so far it's just a dead key until I can find a type bar that matches that key lever and on my own accord I made a mistake when I built the machine I didn't notice until I had completely finished the process that I had swapped the U and the I so um, instead of swapping the key levers I decided to take out the two type bars swap those and undo the key legends and swap those out instead of the whole mechanism because that would require quite some considerable some considerate considerable disassembly but this is what it is this is how what it's turned out to be uh, two and a half months of work have turned into a very beautiful and unusual underwood number five um, I'll be making a few more adjustments in order to make the mechanism run a little bit better but um, I'm quite happy with the outcome of what this has turned out to be hope you enjoyed this video Thank you for watching and until the next one.